Hi, welcome to How to Repair. In today's video, we're going to be diagnosing problems with tumble dryers. Whether you have a vented tumble dryer, a condensing tumble dryer, or a heat pump tumble dryer, the process is all the same. You've seen me use for many years my meters above my test bay, but they've now brought out a portable device, which you are going to be able to use, not only to analyze problems with tumble dryers, but also get a good understanding of how much electricity consumption the appliance uses. These meters not only show you how much time the appliance has been running, the cost of the energy that is used, they also, sh also show you the wattage, the kilowatt hours being used on the appliance during the cycle, and also the voltage and the frequency, and also the ampage. With all this information, we are going to be able to diagnose problems with tumble dryers before you even get the tools out the bag. So the first thing you want to do is reset the meter. And I'm just turning it on. There's a little reset button in the middle and I'm pressing that. The screen will just calibrate itself and it will all go to zeros. But the thing that you want to do next is set the meter up to the cost of kilowatt in your area. This is normally located on your statement or bill at you, you get at the house. So pressing the cost button down and holding it down, the lights will start flashing. The first function button goes through the first zero, which is pounds, the second zero, which is pounds, and the third one, pence. I'm setting this to 36 pence of energy. Once you've got it set up, press the cost button again, and we're ready to start testing appliances. Why this is important for you to do is because if you get an understanding of the cost of the a tumble dryer for a whole cycle, it might give you the best indication when to run the tumble dryer according to your economy electricity that you may get at night, or you may have solar, and therefore you would like it to run in the daytime. So the first appliance I'm going to test, believe it or not, is one of the classics. This is a White Knight tumble dryer. It's quite an old machine, but still a very good machine. I'm going to plug the meter in, plug it into the electricity supply. Now you can see that we're not drawing any wattage at the moment. It might pull one or two watts on standby because you've got sometimes digital displays and other bits and pieces with tumble dryers. I'm going to turn this to 60 minutes and I'm going to press the start button. The tumble dryer will come on and we are set at the moment at half heat. This means that we're pulling 1,400 watts of energy. If I press the high heat button, it will jump up. Now, if your tumble dryer is not working correctly, you may have a lower wattage being drawn like it was on half heat because the element may be open circuit on one side. Or if you have no heat being pulled at all, in other words, only the motor level of wattage. And if I turn this down now until the heater clicks out, because the last 10 minutes of a cycle is where a tumble dryer is only using the motor. And that's predominantly on all tumble dryers. So now you can see that we're only drawing 160 watts of energy. Now that's just the motor running. With a condenser tumble dryer, you may have a pump running as well, which would only be 10, 15 watts of power but we have no heater on at all at the moment. But if I turn it up a bit, the heater will come on. And now we're drawing 1,400 watts of energy, and I turn it to high heat, you're able to understand what is working and what is not working. We're drawing 2,649 watts of energy at the moment, and the tumble dryer is heating. Now, if your tumble dryer had a problem where it may be cutting out incorrectly on thermostats, you may have a faulty element, or you may even have a relay on the circuit board which is not working correctly and not sending power. This is going to point you in the correct direction to understand the fault. Next, we're going to look at a condenser tumble dryer. And this condenser tumble dryer is a sensor dry tumble dryer. Uh, this will apply to all manufacturers. Let me explain how the process works. With a vented tumble dryer, the air is expelled straight out of the machine. With a condenser tumble dryer, it is recirculated. In other words, the hot air does not expel from the machine. It goes through a condensing plate at the bottom of the machine, which then collects the moisture in the warm air and then pumps it up to the collection chamber at the top. Now, these two bimetal strips, or sorry, metal strips inside the tumble dryer, are there to measure the amount of moisture in the clothing. 
This then tells the program that the clothes are not dry and continues drying until the reading gets to a level where it says these clothes are dry and we no longer need to use any energy to continue drying the clothes because I think the clothes are dry. And this is why they're more beneficial than vented tumble dryers. They do use less amount of energy. So these two metal strips basically measure the moisture. An NTC sensor controls the temperature going through the air circuit and you have two thermostats on the heater usually. One is a cycling thermostat which would be about 75 degrees which will kick the heater in and out as required to keep a 75 degree airflow. The other one is a thermal cutout sense, uh, thermostat and this is designed to protect the machine in case it ever overheated and would go open circuit if the temperature got too hot. This may be set at somewhere in the region of 140, 150 degrees and is there to protect the consumer and also the machine. So first thing we're going to do is turn the machine on and I'm just going to set it to a freshen up cycle. The reason I'm doing this, I want you to see on the meter what the baseline wattage of the motor is without the heater in use at all. So we'll start the program. These do take up to about a second for the reading to come through on the device. And as you can see, the motor is running and we're drawing 170 watts of power. 174.6 will fluctuate slightly but we can see what our baseline number is before we actually turn it onto the heat process. Now I'm going to stop the machine now that we know that the motor only draws 170 watts and I'm going to turn the tumble dryer on to extra dry. Now the clothes are wet inside the machine so this basically the program knows that these clothes will be wet and I've cleaned the bars up so I get a good reading. So we'll turn the machine on and we'll start the machine. We can see initially it will quickly show you that it's drawing 1659 watts. This is because it's on low heat setting at the moment so if we deduct the 160, 170 that the motor was drawing we are now roughly using 1500 watts of heating now, in a few minutes, this will actually change because the tumble dryer will decide that the clothes are wet and it needs more heat to dry them. Therefore, it will kick in the full element, in other words, both sides of the element, and it has done it now, and the pump has come on because I can hear the pump running. And we are drawing 2,283, deducting the 160 watts, we have got an element of approximately 2,100 watts combined. So we have basically one half of the element is somewhere in the region of 1,400 and we have another 700 which is on the high side of the element. And this now will be controlled by the NTC sensor and the thermostat on the tumble dryer and it will turn the heater on and off during the cycle until the reading of the close on those two bars where the clothes are actually determined to be dry and then the machine will finish. In other words, auto sensing that the actual water is being taken out of the clothes into the collection chamber and the clothes are now dry. One last thing I wanted to show you was by taking this water container out. At the back of the machine we have a pipe that comes into the machine and I'm going to bring the camera closer so you can see this and what I'm going to do is pour a cup of water in there to activate the pump so you can actually see what should be happening with the water coming from the collection tray to the actual pump or sorry the uh, water container which collects all the water for you. Okay I'm just poured some water into the machine and the pump should come on in a minute and I'm going to put my torch in and if we look at the top left hand side there is a tube and it's very hard for me to get this on camera but the pump will activate in a minute and this is when the program turns the pump on to bring the water from the chamber at the bottom of the machine to the actual top into the collection tray and this is activated and you can see the water coming through. Now this would be going into the collection tray at the moment and there are two pipes on this uh, housing at the top here 
and one is the return pipe and one is the pumping pipe and if the chamber ever got over full the float in the pump assembly would be activated and stop the machine because there is too much water in the machine but I'll just lift that out now don't want to damage my torch and I will drop the container back in okay we have a tumble dryer here that's not turning and has a fault and there's three reasons why a tumble dryer drum is not turning one the belt has snapped number two the motor is unable to turn because maybe you have a faulty capacitor or the motor is jammed. Number three is either the motor is open circuit or the circuit board is not sending power to the motor. So we need to ascertain using the meter and also some repair techniques which I have to understand what the problem is. But the first thing I'm going to do is show you the fault. Turn the machine on, press start you can hear a distinct humming noise. This would automatically tell me that it was a problem with the capacitor. And you could see it was drawing 600 watts. Now it's on opposite rotation and the heater may come on. It's still drawing only 600 watts. So the heater is not working at the moment. And that could be because it is overheated on one of the thermostats. But I need to understand whether it's a jammed motor a problem with a burnt out motor or is it a problem with the capacitor so I'm going to use a screwdriver to simulate the door pin and put this in and you should only do this if you're competent with electrics and I'm going to start the machine again the humming noise is there and we're pulling 200 600 watts I'm going to give it a push it just switched over to the other rotation so I need to do it again in a second It now drops down to 190 watts. This means the motor is good. I'm going to let it do it again so you can actually see what happens with the motor pulling power when it is unable to turn. Wait till it rotates. The humming noise is engaged and it goes up to 640 watts of drawing power. But if I give it a push, that will drop down now to about 180, 190 watts again, 174. So that tells me instantaneous that I have a problem with the capacitor on this machine. So I'm quickly going to rectify the problem and then I'll turn the camera back on for you to show you the machine all working again and we'll be able to check the heating system. Okay, we've done the repair on the appliance and replaced the capacitor. Uh, before I start it and test the cycles on the extra dry cottons and also on the freshen up to show you the motor, I'm just quickly going to wipe the bars inside the tumble dryer and this is what reads the moisture content. These bars can fill uh, get a film built up on them over a period of time and give incorrect readings to the program. So we're going to turn it to freshen up put it on start and the motor springs into action straight away as it should do and we're drawing approximately 180 190 watts of power and that's on freshen up without the heating system I'm going to stop the machine again I'm going to turn it to the extra dry setting and now the machine has cooled down since I last tested the machine when it was faulty so the heating element and the thermostat should be nice and cold and therefore everything touch wood works perfectly so we'll turn it on extra dry and press start and straight away we have 200, 1600 watts of power deducting approximately 200 watts we're approximately 1400 watts of heating element now in a second or two I would expect to see that come up to about 2000 if both halves of the heating element are working correctly because at the moment it's on low heat and the sensor dry system is only requiring half the normal amount of energy from the heating system and there we go it has now jumped up to 2200 watts this means that this Beko tumble dryer 6 kilo model number DSV 64W has approximately a 2 kilowatt heating element and basically 1400 watts is low heat and the additional 600 watts is the high heat setting so 2 kilowatt altogether and this tumble dryer is working perfectly 
Okay, I don't have a heat pump tumble dryer in the workshop at the moment to show you how to test it, but I can explain the process because it's exactly the same process as we've been dealing with with these other two dryers. A heat pump tumble dryer does not have a heating system. It uses a compressor filled with gas, which is basically a refrigeration unit. On the one side of the refrigeration unit, it gets cold and condenses the air going through it. On the other side of the refrigeration process, and I'm doing this in layman terms for you, it creates heat by cooling. Because the colder it gets the, uh, the cooling system for condensing, the warmer it'll get with the air. Now this warm air is blown through the clothes that help the evaporation process, and the condensing process is highly efficient, which extracts the moisture out of the air, and therefore dries the clothes at a much more economic cost in energy to dry the clothes. My problem occurs with all this technology, when you mix technologies like refrigeration and a tumble dryer, we have some commodities which are not taken into the interest of the general public. One, we have dust. This clogs up sometimes the matrix on a refrigeration unit and cause a longer drying cycle. Number two, I have seen on multiple occasions the compressor or the refrigeration circuit has lost its gas. This means it's no longer able to actually become an efficient unit to dry the clothes because the gas has escaped and it can't get cold or get hot. Now when you consider the cost of these three appliances, and I've done this at the time when, about a year ago, when they first started coming out. The vented tumble dryer at same brand, I'm dealing with all the same brand here, and I'm not going to mention the make. The vented tumble dryer was £180. The condenser tumble dryer was £269. And the heat pump tumble dryer was £500, thereabouts. Now, if you consider this tumble dryer, is uses nearly twice the amount of energy as a heat pump tumble dryer does on a cycle at least two two and a half times it would take you a year and a half using the appliance every day to warrant the 300 pound difference in cost the second thing i'd like to make make you aware of when this fails it's easy to repair it's not complicated and the components are quite cheap. But when a heat pump tumble dryer fails, you've got to have a specialist engineer that deals with refrigeration. A lot of engineers will not even work on heat pump tumble dryers because if the gas has escaped, it is such a nightmare to regas one of those units. And all engineers will tell you they have not seen many heat pump tumble dryers lasting much more than five to seven years because of faults. They are notorious for causing problems. So I can't see the beneficial gain in energy saving towards the cost of electricity. Let me just read some numbers out to you on a full load of, or sorry, not a full load. It was about five towels that I was drying at the time. And I did it in all three of the same machine brand. Uh, one was for the vented, one was for the condenser, and one was for the heat pump tumble dryer. The vented tumble dryer took one hour to dry the towels. It used 2.6 kilowatt of energy at 36 pence per kilowatt, say today's money. That was 93 pence per load. The condenser tumble dryer took one hour and 20 minutes to dry the clothes. Same load of clothing. It used 2.4 kilowatt of energy and it cost at 36 pence per kilowatt, 86 pence to dry the clothes. The heat pump tumble dryer was highly efficient. It only used 1.5 kilowatt of energy, but took two hours, 40 minutes to dry the clothes. And it only used 54 pence worth of energy at that rate. To me, the mathematics do not stand up, I'm sorry. The cost difference between the 180 or 269 pound machine compared to a 500 pound machine when the heat pump tumble dryer takes longer to dry the clothes, is more expensive to get repaired, and the lifespan of the machine is just not there yet. So I'm sorry to be 
slightly biased towards the vented and condenser tumble dryers and I apologize to all the manufacturers watching this but the technology is not working on the long term it is working for your statistics when you manufacture it but over the years they just are not efficient when it comes to the cost difference of appliances I hope you enjoyed this video please remember to support the website there's a link in the description to this meter and if you need any further information on uh, tumble dryers across the board please visit the link in the description thanks very much indeed for watching